Welcome again to those of you who have just joined us. And um, as I said, we will have about half an hour for Ms. Roxana and Ms. Yenisel to present some answers to the questions that have already been submitted. And then we'll leave another half hour for additional questions. Thanks for joining us. Ms. Yenisel, do you want to begin? Good morning, everyone. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna present. I'm gonna display the whole presentation. Um, okay, can, can you, can we see the, I don't know how to, to display both screens, like the presentation and the, and the chat. I would like to have access to the chat too, in case somebody wants to add something. Okay, so, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, okay. Um, yeah, can, can everyone see the presentation? Yeah, yeah, good, okay, great. So, well, welcome, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first conversation. Thank you for responding to uh, the survey Ms. LeCour shared. Uh, that that will uh, give us some ideas of, about what are the relevant topics that you would like us to address. Um, so uh, one of the most voted topics uh, was uh, the establishing routines. And uh, we, we thought that it would be better if we can um, program like a weekly meeting so we can go over these topics because uh, maybe today is not going to be enough to cover all of them. So today we're going to make we're going to focus on the on the routine uh, theme. Okay. So mm, now, how how do I move to the next one? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to, to make the transition <laughs> to the other slide. The screen is not allowing me to, to go to the... But in the meantime, if you can write down uh, in the chat, how have you been feeling during this quarantine? And one word, okay? The, the main emotion that you may be experiencing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you one, a couple of more minutes so you can write in one word. Okay, so okay, positive emotions are also 
welcome. <laughs> if any of you have feel any positive feeling, that's okay too. So, um, okay. Very good. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna share, I'm gonna share with you. Um, okay, one second, I'm gonna share with you the results of, of that. So let me see if you can if you can see my the word uh, the wordo that we created with your words with your emotions. Okay. I don't know what's not. Let me see if I can. I'm sorry, this is taking longer than I expected. I, I practiced yesterday and it was so, so easy. Okay, let me see if I can show you. Um, um, well, sorry, it's a, it's, it's a little tiny. Um, but can you see how, how many of us are, like, we are all experiencing the same things, right? We're so, not able to see your screen. Sorry, I'm, Anastasia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me see if I can do it now again. Mm. Well, I'm sorry for that. I, I'm, I'm not being able to share the wordle that we created. So um uh, with the words that you were uh sharing um well but many of you agree and you're feeling worried and sad and stressed and overwhelmed it's a word that it's repeated can you see the, the slide now that yep this one Okay, so no, uh, can. the presentation, uh, we're, we're back to the presentation. See, yeah, okay. So um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not able to share the wordle, but it, it, what I wanted to present for you was like that, that sense of that we, we might be experiencing the same thing, all of us, we, we, are, we are sharing those, uh, those emotions that might be unpleasant. Uh, because they're not like such thing as good emotions, bad emotions. Uh, it's more like pleasant, pleasant emotions or in, un, unpleasant emotions. So many of us might be experiencing me, most of the time unpleasant emotions that probably we don't know how to deal with them. But sometimes understanding and being aware that we are not alone, that many people are feeling like that, give us a sense of, you know, uh, uh, companionship okay so today we are going to be uh talking about routines because when there's a lack of routines there's chaos chaos produce stress stress take us to frustration and that gives like a sen sense of lack of control so um today miss roxana uh, is going to to tell us uh about routines how 
to establish su success, to establish successful routines at home, how to do that, and why is it important to do that. And then after the presentation, we're gonna um, open a question a session for questions and answers. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Roxana. I'm gonna stop sharing so you can share your. Okay. Okay. okay, good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be meeting with you today. Just let me share the, okay. okay. Jenny, maybe you can share it. Okay, I will manage for you and you let me know, okay? Wait, 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 wait. Thank you. Okay, so, we did this survey first to know more about the topics that might interest you or the things that you might be wondering about during this quarantine that we are all going through. So we created some topics and then the most voted one was how to establish routines. And maybe this is something that seems very simple, but it's actually not and it's as important for children as it is important for us as adults because we are all going through this situation. We are all used to going out, to going to work, to going to the gym, to going to different places, and now we need to create a whole new routine for us as well. So the first slide is routines at home, how to do it. This is not like uh, something that is fixed for every family. So these are some tips that might be useful for you, but you, you need to know that you can adapt it to your particular family situation. Maybe we can go to the next slide, Yanni, please. Okay, so what are routines, first of all? Routines are things that we do mostly in the same order every day, mostly at the same time every day. And at the end, we sort of do it automatically because we get used to that. They are very important as part of our daily lives it, we all have different sort of routines and they give us a sense of consistency and security. For example, for babies, um, I don't know if you remember when your child was a baby, routines were like the most important thing. To help them sleep well, to have their meals, to get a bath, everything. So mostly in these times of uncertainty a uh, well-established routine will help us feel secure about something that is consistent in our routines we also need to be flexible that's why i put in the um, in the title routines and flexibility we don't want to be rigid and stressed about following the routines so in our routine we need to determine what are the aspects that are essential and what are the aspects that are negotiable so as I said before, these are only guidelines, but each family will adjust to their particular situation. It also helps a lot to write down your routine and make like a visual so that everybody in the house knows mo pretty much what are the different activities that you're doing every day. Okay, so the next question, you can chat questions if you have, and at the end we, we can answer them all. Okay, so I'm gonna, go over different aspects of the routine. And the first one, and really important, is the morning routine, okay? The morning routines send a message to our mind and our body that we are ready to our daily activities. So if we stay, this I tell to children all the time, if we stay in pajamas all day long, what do you think your brain is gonna think? This is time to sleep, this is time to rest, so it's very important to wake up at the same time every morning or it doesn't have to be like, okay, let's wake up at eight every day, but we can wake up between eight, eight fifteen, or any time that works for you and your family. Hygiene habits are very important for children, like brushing their teeth, taking a shower and getting dressed. Okay. Having breakfast with your child is another good routine. So in the morning you can start, like in a in an adequate and proper mood to learn um something yes okay after you 
And this also goes for us as an adult. We need to get ready to work, the ones that are working. And of course, during the weekends, it can be more flexible. Maybe in the weekends, they can stay on pajamas longer or they can wake up a little later. So the second thing is time to learn. So you need to set the environment for them to be ready to learn. First, set the least distracting environment. It can be a desk, a desk or a table. Um, for example, sitting on a couch is not, maybe it's not the right uh, place to log in CISO, for example, and do an assignment. Maybe when they're doing games or other activities, you can change the environment a little bit. Um, it needs to have light and ventilation. Very important, only the materials that they need to complete their assignments. Because if they have toys or other things, a pet or whatever, I've seen a lot of children when we're doing our Zoom meetings that want to bring their toys or their pets and then that becomes a distraction. Also make sure that iPad and laptops are charged so that that isn't an excuse for you know missing that time. Um, again, start working at the same time every day or this like a range of time between 9 and 9.30 or between 8 and 8.30 and verify that your child understand the assignment's instructions. You can ask them to explain in their own words. In that way, they won't interrupt their activity asking about the instructions because they already know. So if you have time, if you can, if they're like, this applies more for younger, younger children, you can ask them, uh, you can read the instructions for them or they can read it with you and then you can say, okay, tell me in your own words, what do you need to do? Then you need to include breaks, of course. We all need breaks, right? So in your child learning time, please include some breaks and they can be established in two different ways. You can either determine a specific amount of time working. For example, after 30 minutes working, you're gonna have a break. Of course, of course, for younger children, it could be after 15, 20 minutes working, you can have a five minute break, or it could be after completing an assignment if it doesn't take too long. So, okay, you're gonna do assignment one, then you have a break, then assignment two, you have a break and so on. During these breaks, you should avoid technology because then they get very excited about technology and it's hard for them to go back to the assignment. And you, can in, you could include some brain, brain breaks or energizers. Um, brain breaks are different like physical activities that they could do in their break to like give their minds this break from whatever intellectual activity they were doing. So it can be like, uh, for example, yoga poses or doing some physical activities like jumping jacks or whatever, or they can just have a snack and relax. The next, please. Okay, tip number four, please, please, please include free time. So this is the more, the most flexible time of your routine. After completing their daily learning time, please let them have free play time. Playing is the activity that develops every aspect of a child's development, motor, cognitive, emotional, social, and it, they, they um, develop their creativity through play. For example, for older students like teenagers or preteens, you can, um, you can set like uh, play dates or you know hangouts meetings with friends that could also work so they can also communicate with them or you can play uh, board games together or yeah, they can just chill and relax uh, in whatever way works better for them but for younger children it's very positive to just let them play. Tip number five include family time so during this quarantine, we are locked down with our families and loved ones, and probably we're spending, well, not probably, for sure, we are spending more time with them than we have ever spent. So let's create opportunities for, like, using this time to have activities together, like playing games, eating meals together, watching movies, um, doing mindfulness activities together, 
you could also use your creativity to plan for different activities that you can do as a family. During these times, you may also reflect and share about your day. And you can even have like a grateful circle and share all of you like, okay, today I'm grateful for um, the lunch we had today. I, it, was, it was my favorite food. Or today I had a really like productive meeting at work. Or today I had a chance to play with my pets and I really enjoy it. So in this way, we keep our minds in a more positive mood. Tip number six would be night routines. And I think this is the last. As it is important to have morning routines, also night routines are key for a restful sleep. So you can establish a different um, night routine for weekdays and weekends. So it can be more flexible in the weekend. And avoid to use technology before going to bed because in that way they would be like very excited and it would be more difficult for them to go to bed. And you can also include for younger kids, you can include uh, like reading a book for them or having a story or having a prayer together if you, if you do that. And for, for older kids, try to try that they don't have access to screens in the 20 or 30 minutes before going to bed. So the exact steps of the routine that you're going to implement depend on your family. But it is important that you all understand that we are doing all these things to get ready to sleep and relax for the night and get ready for the next day. So these are like the six tips that we wanted to share with you on how to establish a routine. We are going to Hi, Rox. I cannot listen. She she must have she must have dropped out um, her connection. Oh. She she'll join again. I I think it would be helpful now if we could have a um, opportunity for parents to ask questions and yeah. you could have some answers. I think the easiest way for us to run this is if people. Um, are familiar with using the chat. If you can go in the chat and write your question, and then we can take questions as they come in through the chats. Sorry, I was I was taken out. <laughs> Thank you. You're back. You're back. That's good. Okay, so. Uh huh. Yes, I I can definitely find a way to share this presentation with you. And of course, of course, this is just like a debrief or of some ideas that you can use. But if you're finding it um, like like a challenging to establish your routine, we can always like talk to you individually and find out different ways to help your particular family to establish these routines. Yeah, I, I, I would also like to add, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will also like to add that it's important that children participate in 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 setting up the routines. Okay. This is this is super important because that that allow them to make decisions. You know about about the day. It, this is really important. Uh, they will feel better if they help to make it. Okay. And include exercise also each day. Uh, it doesn't have to do to be like a complete workout session, but that's something that I, that might include some kind of movement, uh, because well, uh, houses and apartments are different. Some people have green areas, some others don't. And but it's important to find a way to move to move around with with any kind of a physical activity. Um, and also, well, consistency is really important. Uh, once the, the routines are created, uh, the, yes, they can be flexible, of course, but c consistent daily routines is the it's, it's, it's what we recommend because that creates, you know, the the sense of control that every day it's going to happen more or less the same things, and we are following a structure. 
and also and also Jenny said that these routines will also apply to us as adults because I don't know what's going on okay because <laughs> we are all in this together right like we are also changing our daily lives as I said in the beginning of the of the presentation and we also need to reflect on how to like um, include our routines with them and then have like time for uh, for yourselves or for ourselves to do exercise, to practice mindfulness activities, to do your work, to support them in their learning, and also to have some family activities together. So this applies for everyone in the family. Um, and it is that like the most recommended strategy in right now to support families in staying like healthy mentally to have something that is consistent within their houses when everything outside is so uncertain. Yeah, Ms. Um, Ms. sorry, uh -huh. Mr. Xana, there's some questions in the chat. Yeah, let me, uh, let me thank you. Here. Okay, Mr. Xana, what do you think about five-year-old playing all day with four-year-old brother? They just want to be together by these times. Well, of course, this is like the best time for siblings to bond and like strengthen the relationship, but they need to also have like their learning time separate. So you can um, you can plan, as we were saying before, like separate times or uh, for their learning in the morning, preferably. And then in the afternoon, they can when they once they finish all, all their learning activities, they can play together like all afternoon if they want to. I think that's very positive because we are usually on our own things every day. And this is something very positive about this situation. One of the only positive things that we can find is that um, families are coming together. Uh, okay, if my kid, another question, if my kid doesn't want to make the activity in the moment we have established, we can stop and do it later. I'm not sending a wrong message by letting him quit or stop. Okay, if a child doesn't want to make an activity at the moment, it would be nice to ask them questions and have a deeper understanding of why he refuses to do the activity. Maybe he's too tired. Maybe this activity is too difficult. Maybe he doesn't like it. I don't know. And then, like do your actions according to the reasons why your child doesn't want to do this activity. Um, and then said, try to send the message that they should always keep the routine, but also that you are understanding of their feelings and that you are working as a team to, to ensure that they are learning, but that they're also feeling happy and safe. I would just like to add on to that, um, that it's important uh, when we talk about routines, we're talking about establishing consistency. So if your child is having difficulty um, or engaging in activity and you and it's, you know, it's the first time it's happening or it, it just ha it's, you know, maybe it happened last week and now it's happening again, there might be some other underlying cause for that that you want to stop and, and take care of. That's okay. The issue about uh, creating a, the, the, yeah, the issue about creating a routine is that it helps kids know that regardless of what the activity is, this is the time that's, that's for learning. But again, if that happens consistently, that the child is consistently refusing, then we need to, we need to sit down and, and please contact the teacher to figure out what's what could they do to support that your child engages in the learning activities. I hope that answer helps. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw that Mingling Duen uh, add up something about boundaries and I, I also wanted to add something about that. Um, right now we are all, you know, confined to the same space in a, in a certain way and boundaries are always important even like if we have our own you know daily routines and we go to work and uh, 
children go to school and we are like we have all these separate spaces in which we interact with others but right now during quarantine things have changed and uh, um the boundaries are that which have always been to protect us and to keep us safe they're right now they they are more important and we need to be clear we need to to keep that in mind how to restructure those boundaries within our our spaces and uh, it's not it's not i'm not talking about physical boundaries i'm, I'm talking more about you know emotional and uh, social boundaries in which yeah i maybe feelings want to to spend more time playing and sharing and this is a great opportunity to do that uh, but also keeping in mind, as, as, as Roxana mentioned before, we all need our own spaces too. You as parents need your own spaces. Uh, uh, couples need their own spaces. Siblings need their own spaces. Uh, individually, we need our own spaces. So this is something you can also discuss as a family. Like what are you needing right now in terms of, you know, keeping clear boundaries and protecting uh, each other's spaces and what what spaces we're going to use for like family interaction and how we're going to structure you know individual times maybe not like putting down in the routine like written but that keeping that in mind uh, that during that routine also you need time to do your things and and it's important to discuss these things with children because the the whole routine has changed you know that maybe they are not aware that when they are at school you were doing some other thing and um it's it's important to talk about that with them to let them know that there's an expectation that as as well as they have their own time to to work on their schoolwork or play with friends or in whatever they do on their own, you also need your own time to do your adult stuff. So it, 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 that's part of creating boundaries, but we have to keep in mind that boundaries are established through communication. It's not something that we just like, okay, we're gonna establish this boundary. Of course, we leave the back, we, we, we add out the boundaries, but they, are, they need to be discussed. The communication is a key component of establishing clear, healthy, and safe boundaries, okay? Coming back to the questions, are, are there more questions? There was some, there was a question earlier about uh, suggestions for managing e-learning and limiting technology with, with young children. Um, Roxana, would you like to speak to that? I have some ideas too. You can, you can start. Okay. I think it's important that as we've been saying there, there are times for learning and, uh, the e-learning that, that the teachers are, um, providing different opportunities for e-learning, but there's definitely a need to limit what we call screen time. So, limiting technology that that can mean many different things but generally we talk about screen time so it's important again uh children uh you know are all different but and we all ha are in different circumstances in terms of what we can uh provide as as uh, options for our children in our homes because our homes are all different but i think an important thing is is um just to be aware of how much screen time time your child is actually on uh, actually doing and then what is your goal with that the screen time really should be no more than a couple of hours when when they're um, sort of the three and four year olds but what do we do what do we do instead are there things in your house can kids take for example can you dump out all the sock all your family socks onto the bed and mix them up and ask them to put them back in pairs. Those are activities that kids can do. Or they can sit down with the shoes and you can, you know, have them, uh, you know, learn to tie shoes. That's another, you know, activity that doesn't require screen time. Just, you know, turning, you can listen to music through your computer, through a piece of technology, but without the screen on, 
right? And then have them invent a dance or choreography a dance or create a play or a show for somebody that, for example, you know, every evening you might have a show night and they, you know, every person in your family has an opportunity to perform something special for the family that night, um, whether it's a joke or, you know, a song or a little dance. Those are things that even three and four year olds can do if you help model it for them and you help engage them. And then once you do it a couple of times, then they're, then they're able to do that independently. Yeah, and board games are also very helpful because, um, and, and, and I'm sure many of you have, have a lot, lot of them and they are somewhere in the closet, hidden in the closet, it's, well, it's time to take them out and play because they are very helpful for, to develop many, many skills, you know, decision making, strategic, strategic thinking, uh math math skills through counting waiting turns board games are super helpful during these times because um they allow children to develop other skills that are also needed you know for for academics but also our life skills okay so uh take out those board games and start playing with them so um, yeah, also, Ms. Batista, I want to add something um, because the question is, what suggestions do you have for managing e-learning and limiting technology use in small children? So we need to remember that screens and technology is very, um, it has a lot of stimulus and it's very exciting for children. So this is the reason why we should limit it to, um, for young children like 20, 30 minutes, and then we can add more minutes as they grow older, because it's so exciting for them that for some kids later, then other things outside are not as exciting. So yes, of course, as Ms. Um, Amina said, if, you, if it has a purpose, then you can use it as a tool to like enhance other activities that would be more enriching for your child. And then there's another comment. Some days my six-year-old is too tired to do a specific activity when assigned, and she does it without any problem during the afternoon. I think part of the flexibility and the mental health for everyone at home is to allow it. No big deal. I totally agree with you. <laughs> yes, of course, like routines are important. It's like a framework or a structure, but we as parents can be flexible and allow our children sometimes to as long as they do the activities and it's not something consistent every day, um, it's an option too. So, Ms. Bat, yeah, sorry, yeah, I, I'm here. There's another <laughs> question before that one. Uh, I have an only child, he's so lonely and it manifests as defiance, even connecting virtually with friends, classmates, and family. He is a different person. Any thoughts on how to help him through this? Okay, yeah. Well, you know, COVID-19 has taken so many things from us, you know, our routines, our work routines, school routines, uh, family routines. We have to, we had to create new family routines in, in these circumstances. And of course, we are all reacting to to those changes. We we have to, we we have been, we have to adjust. And children are the most vulnerable individuals, you know, it, it, be, be before this situation, and behavior changes and, and and hopefully we will go back to those topics in our uh, mm -hmm. future sessions we're going to have for, like specific uh, sessions to talk about behavior to talk about uh some other emotions uh-huh exactly so hopefully we will come back to this topic with more detail but i want to mention that it it's it's okay to start noticing changes things, attitudes that we haven't seen uh, so far. And that's a, those are responses to this new circumstance. Okay. Um, so my strongest recommendation will be uh, to talk, like to validate those emotions, to ask, to ask them how are they feeling, to try to help them put in words, what are they experiencing? Okay. Um, it's important that we respect our, our emotions. At the beginning, I, I was saying that there there's no such thing as bad emotions, 
good emotions. It's just like pleasant emotions, unpleasant emotions. Be children's behavior always is always try to tell us something that something is going on. Uh, that's how children try to express their inner world. Okay, so if you are noticing new behaviors, new attitudes that you haven't seen before, try to talk to your child and ask them how are they feeling, okay? That's, that's the first thing to do, to respect and recognize our emotions. So you can uh, identify them and then try to regulate them. It, it's, uh, I, was, I want to make emphasis uh, here. Regulate emotion is not about avoiding em emotions. It's not like, okay, I'm gonna talk about this to stop feeling sad, no. If you're feeling sad, allow yourself or allow your child to feel sad, that's okay. It, it's about like regulating, it's more about understanding and how acknowledging my emotions, understanding what's going on so I can respond, respond to them. Okay, what, what I'm gonna do to feel better, okay? I, I'm feeling sad right now, I'm feeling frustrated. I cannot, I cannot go to school, I cannot play with my friends. Yeah, I can play with my friends through, I don't know, hangouts. I've, I've seen children becoming many, sorry, very creative about developing new ways to interact. Uh, but asking your child, like, how would you like to interact with, with a friend, if you want to make like a like a like you know like a phone call or uh, get a something, I mean, right now online interaction is the only resource we have to to connect with others. So it it's it's creating that balance between you know screen time, no screen time, uh, and there are other ways to to become social like. Finding time in a uh, family time to play something that defiance may come from this demand of you know calling for attention like I need you I need you mom I need you dad but I don't know how to ask you to be here for me so it's like you know being those emotional translators uh, that means like helping them to understand what they're feeling and putting those emotions in words. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, like uh, Miss Miss Aida shared um, a website. It says behavior is language. Talk to your children about emotions. Here's an article. You can go and check it out. And Miss Lacour shared giving children a sense of purpose is an important tool for helping them forward. So in our next webinar, do you have any more questions? You can, we have a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, can I add something to what we were saying before about emotions, sorry. Um, it, when we are ta talking about emotions, consciousness is a, it's a very important part. It's like, how do we help children to become conscious about what they are feeling? It's asking them, what are they feeling? And where in their body are they feeling it? This is uh, this is super helpful. Every time I I, I work with a child, the, those are my first questions. Sometimes they don't they don't have the vocabulary to express, and there's 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 a lot of there's a um, wheel of emotions. You can Google it, uh, and there's a circle of uh, of more than twenty different uh, vocabulary words to express emotions and then connect the body. Where are you feeling that? If you're sad, where are you feeling that sadness? They might say, I feel it in the chest, I feel it in the stomach, I feel it in the head. So that, that, that also helps them become aware, you know, the next time they feel that like that, they can identify that sadness or frustration or uh, disappointment or anxiety there's some there's a wide variety there, we we always try to to help children understanding that is not how are you feeling good bad well good or bad are not emo not emotions or states so it's helping them to put in words 
what what are they feeling and allowing time to worry that that's also important and it's okay to worry it's okay to 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 feel like that so allow your yourself to feel worried or sad or whatever mm -hmm. and then the next question will be what do i need to do right now with this Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a really, um, there's a really nice. Well, there's another question here uh, from Laura. It says, "My seven-year-old son asked me, what is the point of all it? It does not make any sense. Why do I have to do all school work? There is no school. Um, you can tell him and re reinforce him that school is not a building." We have, of course, we love our building. We live, we miss our building. It's a very special place for us, but school is not about a building. It's about the people that go and about the learning that happens and about the relationships. The environment is a really important part of the, of the school, but it's not that school. And reinforce him that we are all trying to stay connected in this situation. The people, which is the most important part of a school, are trying to bond within this hard time through technology and ensure that the learning continues. So this is very important. And actually now in Panama, we know that many schools are not, are not having this opportunity. So we are very lucky and our children are very lucky that they have this opportunity to continue learning. So reinforce that school is not just a building, it's also the people and the learning happening. I don't know if Ms. Lacour or I, I just yeah. I just wanted to add on to that that um, I uh, mentioned something thing in the article for this week's Met Weekly um, about the about uh, growth mindset. So at our school, we we talk as an IB school. We talk about the learner profile and. And, but an underlying component of all of that is really keeping a growth mindset. Um, and that just means that we are learners, we are lifelong learners. As an IB learner, as an IB school, that's our goal. Our goal is to continue learning. So whether there's school or no school, whether you're on summer holiday or you're you know, uh, in, in Semana Santa, there's still things happening in your life around you that you're learning from and that you're learning about. So learning doesn't necessarily just stop because we are in a building or we're not in a building. We keep learning in all different kinds of ways. Our job as a school is to make sure that we are preparing kids to move forward in the, in the next sort of developmental stage, so to speak, um, of, of their development. So, you know, I think it's important that uh, you might want to take a look at the growth mindset information and, and see how much of that can help support you as you as you talk to your child about the importance of continuing learning. OK. Thank you for adding that mm -hmm. resource in the chat. Any other questions? Um, I'm going back to the, there were, okay, so, well, there were some other questions or, or topics at the end of the survey uh, we shared, um, like uh, workload and motivation, how to motivate kids to exercise. Well, the best motivation I think a child can get will be like setting up the example for them so it's like if we want them to exercise we should exercise with them uh and it's easier it, it, to make them engage if they see us doing something um ideas on how to promote children to continue the social social socialization with friends and how to show empathy through screen uh yeah okay um well as i was saying um right now the only way to socialize with other people outside our our walls it's through screen um 
that's something we need to, to establish very clearly, uh, you know, times, not only times, at, at what time you can join uh, a group of friends to play something, but also how long, and that's related to boundaries. Boundaries need to be clearly established. Times, uh, clearly established time frames. okay, to do that. So it's like, okay, now it's time for you to talk to a friend, uh you you have 30 minutes to do that uh because remember we we are trying to balance here on screen off screen time but since the whole uh virtual e-learning you know the e-learning experience is mostly related to doing things on screen uh we need to we need to help them create that balance okay mm -hmm. Uh, but it doesn't need to be every day also. That's something you can negotiate with them. You can you can establish like weekdays or weekends for them to do something uh, on screen with friends and, and try to, to, to set up. There, there's, there's a lot of, of, of apps right now where you can like play even board games through screen. So it's, it's, it's trying to to find out uh, what resources are there now that we all of us are requesting or demanding this, you know, the need to, to socialize with others through screen. And um, okay, oh, only children in quarantine. Yeah, uh, for them, I will say like it, it's very important to create that balance of, you know, so socializing with external people and socializing with the family that that needs to to create a, a balance throughout the the daily routine uh only children can be very you know demanding of parents time and going back to boundaries again it's important that you can talk to them about when are you available for them? Because you also need your time to do your stuff. Uh, so if you structure a, a clearly, you know, detailed routine, and you include those times, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be facing uh, that kind of issues in which a child can demand extra. And if that if if that's happening, remember that that behavior might be, might mean something else. So it's always good to talk to the child and ask them like, what's going on? I've noticed that you are being more demanding lately. And what what is it that you are needing? What is it that you are feeling right now? And something that can a simple conversation can solve, you know? Uh, how to know if children stay on track with their classes? I'm reading. I'm reading questions from from the from the survey. This is how to know if children stay on track with their classes. This is this is a really good question because uh, we we cannot think that just establishing the routine would do all you know the magic. We we need to keep track of what what kids are doing. Uh, once in a while try to, to to come in and see what are they doing if they are really engaged and they're learning uh especially during those times you have established for schoolwork okay take a look at them get in the get in the room and ask them check what they're doing another another thing you can do also is to check on the history of the of the device to see if they've been, you know, uh, accessing websites and doing uh, cool work, uh, like monitor the device, how it's been used, that, that you could do that at the end of the, uh, when they're not using the device. Um, and also, um, is a track of, uh -huh. And also, like following up with the teacher, like you can you can contact the teacher and and see and check if, if they are submitting their assignments, or or you can go into the Google Classroom or Seesaw or whatever resource the your child is using and and go through the.
many teachers are posting like daily to do lists, and you can check with them if they have done or if they've submitted uh, the daily assignments that were posted by teachers. That's also a way to check if they are uh, following uh, the the routine, the, the the daily assignments that teachers establish for that day. There's another question. Uh, there's a comment there that's a, an idea uh, that says that we included an expectation that our kids will reach out to someone, friend, or relative each day, right along with schoolwork and home chores. It's part of our daily routine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and also um, making them part of those chores. Uh, that's that's really helpful. This is a great opportunity to learn many things that maybe in our normal and regular lives that we used to have, we, our children wouldn't have the, the, the chance to learn, okay? So even though we're going through this crisis that is presenting us so many challenges, we can, we, we, we can try to see the bright side of this and if, if we take this as an opportunity for growth and learning, I will say being at home, having time to do things together, it's a great opportunity to develop skills that maybe because of you know the lack of time or the lack of other resources, we, we couldn't uh, implement. So sweeping, mopping, <laughs> Even cooking, uh, uh, making the bed, uh, bringing the 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 the, land, the the clothes to the to the laundry, doing those tiny chores at home uh, are super helpful for them to develop executive functions related to planning, organizing, and those are things that they really need. For, for their for their life, those are life skills. Okay, so this is a great opportunity to develop those skills. So take advantage of that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, we're we're coming up to to end the hour here, but um, I would like to thank Miss Batista and Miss Palacios or Miss. Yenisel and Ms. Roxana, as we better know them, um, for putting this presentation together. And please know that they will continue doing this, uh, these kinds of presentations on a weekly basis. So you can tune in again and bring your questions if you have them. Um, you can always send an email to either of them if you would like to have a consultation with them. Um, they are available. They're on our Met School uh, virtual website. There's a link to the counselor's website where there's a form you can use to actually schedule an appointment if you want to do it that way, or you can just send them an email. Mm -hmm. um, we wanna thank all of the parents who tuned in today, and we hope you feel like you had a, a opportunity to listen to a few, a few things that, help, that will help you through the rest of the, the, these coming weeks. Uh, and let us know if you have more questions. We look forward to hearing from you. Um, and as I said, I've recorded this uh, session and I will make sure that it's available to parents. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank and you. Have a, have, an, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank Super. you. Bye, thank you very much. <laughs>